I'm Celine LaTulip, and today I'm going to talk to you about using variables and arrays in EarSketch. Okay, so here's my EarSketch script. Uh, the tempo was 120 beats per second, and I've got three fit media calls in here using three different musical samples, and they're up here. Um, they end at measure 13, and we can just take a quick listen. Okay. So one of the things that you might notice about this ear sketch script is there's some repetition here. The number 13 appears in all of these calls, and that's the end measure that we're stopping the sample at. Now, if I wanted to change this so that it was shorter, say all of them stopped at, at measure 9, I'd have to replace three different 13s here with the number 9. And there's a better way to do this to make this more flexible, and that's to use variables. So I'm going to create a variable, and in JavaScript we do that by using the keyword var. I'm going to call my variable end measure. Note that I'm using camel case, the M is capitalized. And I'm going to set my variable to the initial value of 9. So I say equals 9, and I put a semicolon because JavaScript statements end with a semicolon. Now I can use this end measure variable and replace the 13 in all of these fit media statements. And if I run this, we'll see that now everything is ending at 9. Now if I change my mind and I want to change it back to, maybe I want it to be um, 17, I can change just this one value. And now you can see I've got 17 measures of music. And I didn't have to change it on all the fit media calls. So you can imagine if I had like 15 fit media calls, this is going to save me a lot of time if I don't have to do that. But these variables can also be used flexibly. So you can see that the second sample, the second fit media call, actually starts at measure two. So we get this sort of you know lead in, slow lead in. Um, maybe we want to end it a little bit early too. And we can do this by actually using the variable name with some simple math. So I can do on the second sample, I can do end measure minus one. And then on the third track, I can do end measure minus two. And you can see if we run this, that now things sort of lead in slowly and then they fade out slowly by the different samples ending gradually. Okay, so using variables like this can be really flexible and there's lots of different ways to use variables in EarSketch. Now, what I want to do now is talk about arrays. And arrays are a special kind of variable where instead of just having one value, we can hold a whole list of values. So I am going to make a variable which is going to be my favorite music sample. So I'll call it fave samples. And we make an array, which is a list variable, by enclosing a list in square brackets. So I actually already have a whole list of samples over here just to save time. I'm going to copy them and paste them in, right? And so I'm going to make this bigger just so we can see this. You can see that I've got, I think, about 11 samples here and they're comma separated. Now I've got them sort of stacked up here vertically using carriage returns so that each is on a line. They don't have to be like that. They could be like this, just one after another. But by stacking them vertically and keeping them tabbed in like this, it's just easier for me to see them all. So the thing to know about arrays in almost all programming languages is that we can get access to the values inside the array by using the number, which is the index. But in, arrays are indexed starting with zero. So the index for this one is 0. The index for this one is 1, um, and so on. So if I want to get this sample, I use the array name, which is fave samples. I put square brackets, and then I use the number 0. So to get this, use fave samples of 0. So to get the, the second one down, I would say use fave samples of one, okay? And to get the last one, we can do this really nice trick. You might think that this last one should be, if there's 11 samples, you might think it should be um, fave samples of 11. But remember, we start counting at zero. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the eleventh sample is actually fave samples of ten. That can be a little hard to keep track of, a little hard to remember, so there's another way to do this, 
we can also do fave samples of fave samples dot length. And this is really great because it allows us to, um, we don't have to actually know how many samples exactly are. Fave samples of length is 11, so we do fave samples of length minus one, that will make this 10, which is the same as this. Okay, so how do we use these, um, this array now that we've created it? What I'm going to do is I'm gonna replace these um, in here. So FM base one, that's this zero, one, two, three, that is going to be fave samples of three. The world percussion bass wood tone, that's four. So fave samples of four. And the YG house bass, that's the very first one. So that's fave samples of zero. And so now we can run this and we'll see that we have our music as before. Now what I can do now that I have this whole array of a whole bunch of my favorite samples is I can sub in other samples by just changing these numbers. So maybe I want two and six and maybe I want nine. And I don't know which ones those are or how this is gonna sound, but this is a nice way to experiment quickly. And we can see how this sounds. Okay. And I can try some other ones. Maybe I want eight and seven and 10. And we'll run that again. Okay. So you can see here how we are using an array of samples and we're getting access to the different samples in there by using the array name and then an index number. Um, one thing that's important to see what happens is if you actually try to go outside of the length of the array. So we know the array has 13, uh, 11 samples in it. So if I put the number 13 here, I'm going to get an error. And you can see here, there's an error with the expected data type. File key must be a string on line 26. It's not really the best error message, but it's actually because I'm trying to index outside of the array. There aren't um, 13 samples or 14 samples in this array, so that doesn't work. Okay, so hopefully now you've seen how arrays work and how you can use them in EarSketch. In the next video, I'll show you how you can actually combine arrays with using random number generators to do some fun stuff with music. Thanks for watching.